welcome to this presentation on Syngas to Biofuse. My name is Bjorn Christian Engif. I have worked on gas and biomass conversion value chains for close to 20 years and I have a background in chemical engineering and a PhD in catalysis for hydrogen production. I work as a senior scientist in process technology at Sintef, which is one of Europe's largest independent research organizations. And our vision is technology for a better society. Every year we carry out thousands of projects for customers, large and small, using our broad expertise. In the pulp and fuel project, Sintef has been responsible for work related to gas cleaning and conditioning, fuel synthesis by the fissure chopper process, and upgrading of the synchro to biofuel through fractionation and hydroprocessing. Now, depending on which gasification process you use, the produced in gas typically contains unwanted contaminants. Tars, aromatic compounds, sour gases, and particulates may foul or corrode process equipment or deactivate the catalyst for gas conditioning and fuel synthesis and must therefore be removed. The purpose of gas cleaning is to remove all unwanted pollutants down to acceptable levels for the downstream processes. The gas quality requirements for syngas generated from gasification of biomass depends on the application of the syngas. For the fuel synthesis via the fissure drop process, the gas needs to be largely free of all forms of contamination, including particulates, alcoholics, sulfur, and nitrogen compounds. Before making any recommendations for gas cleaning in the pulp and fuel project, we studied the gas cleaning solutions selected for other pilot and demonstration plants. For example, in Gissing in Austria, a fluidized bed steam gasification process was operated for many years, and different downstream applications of the syngas were demonstrated, including pilot scale fissure drop synthesis. And for this system, the overall gas cleaning largely consisted of dry dust precipitation followed by wet scrubbing. Here is a simplified process flow sheet for the pulp and fuel process steps in the dry gasification routes. The gas cleaning after the gasifier consists of multiple steps. Immediately after the gasifier, any fly ash will be removed, followed by de-dusting and filtration using baghouse filters or similar and activated carbon. Then follows process units for converting organic sulfur and carbonyl sulfide to hydrogen sulfide and saturation of trace olefins. The shift process here indicated as a sour shift process adjust the hydrogen to carbon monoxide ratio, after which the hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide is removed using an amine process. The clean syngas is sent to the fissure drop synthesis, where the synthetic crude is produced. This crude is further upgraded by hydroprocessing, separated into different biofuel fractions. The fissure drop synthesis itself dates back to the 1920s, where German researchers were looking for ways to convert coal to liquid fuels. The process is named after the inventors Franz Fischer and Hans Stropsch, who worked for Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Coal Research during the period leading up to the Second World War. The technology was later adapted by Sasol in South Africa to produce transportation fuels and products for their return market during the apartheid regime. Today, there exist several large-scale facilities for conversion of coal and natural gas to fissure drop liquids, with production capacities ranging from a few thousand barrels per day to 140,000 barrels for gas to liquids and 160,000 barrels for coal to liquids. Different reactor concepts have been demonstrated for fissure drop synthesis. This can largely be distinguished as moving bed reactors covering slurry bubble columns and fluidized beds, and stationary bed reactors, including multiple multi-tubular fixed bed reactors and micro-channel reactors. The fluidized bed reactors are typically operated with an iron-based catalyst and has been employed by Sasol since the 1950s to produce road transportation fuels in South Africa based on coal. The fluidized bed reactors are two-phase gas-solid systems, while the slurry bubble columns and stationary bed reactors are three-phase gas liquid solid systems. Now there are two main reasons for the development of different reactor and catalyst concepts. First, there is the need to tailor the product to the desired application, which can be transportation fuels 
or intermediates for chemical production. Secondly, and importantly, is solving the heat management challenge due to the exothermicity of the reactions. The Fischer Trop synthesis can be described as a polymerization reaction where hydrogen and carbon monoxide react to form a growing chain of methylene monomers that eventually terminate to olefins and paraffins. The reactions occur on reduced metallic nanoparticles of transition metals, including cobalt and ruthenium, or on iron carbides. The product distribution is largely governed by the polymerization kinetics and can be described by the Anderson Schultz for Lorry distribution, where a selection of catalysts and operating conditions largely affect the chain growth probability, which dictates the overall product spectrum. Now, this is a bit oversimplified, since you may also form alcohols and other oxygenated compounds. And when operated at high temperatures, Orion-based catalysts with different promoter elements, cracking or isomerization reactions may also occur. Because of the wide range of boiling points for the hydrocarbons produced, as well as unsaturated nature of the olefins, the synchro would require upgrading to be suitable as a biofuel blend stick. An important part of pulp and fuel was to study the impact of staging the addition of hydrogen to the fischer trop synthesis, since it's known that operating with low hydrogen to carbon monoxide ratios promotes chain growth probability. Based on experimental testing and simulations in the project, it was concluded that at least three to four stages were necessary to achieve high overall conversion, dependent on the optimal conversion per stage. In the pulp and fuel project, Synthef has carried out synthesis of both cobalt and iron-based fischer tropsch catalyst powders, as well as upscaling of those materials to technical catalysts by coating the powders on catalyst supports and through pelletization by tableting. Here are some pictures from the experimental work on fischer tropsch synthesis, showing examples of catalyst batches with cobalt catalyst coated on supports, and some pictures from the testing of stage fischer tropsch synthesis and synchro production. The product we obtained from the fischer tropsch process using a cobalt-based catalyst contains significant fraction of waxy hydrocarbons, seen as white substance in these bottles. In order to evaluate the product quality as a biofuel, we needed to upgrade the syncrude by hydroprocessing. Hydroprocessing can generally be defined as the reaction of oil fractions with hydrogen, and here we make a distinction between hydrotreating and hydrocracking. The main difference between these processes, apart from differences in catalyst properties required, are related to what purpose they serve in the upgrading. Hydrotreating is mainly used to remove unwanted heteroatoms, such as sulfur, nitrogen, and oxygen, to saturate olefins. During hydrotreating, you want to minimize cracking reactions to a conversion below 10%. Hydrocracking, however, is a more severe form of hydroprocessing, occurring at high temperatures, where the purpose is to break carbon-carbon bonds, reduce molecular weight in order to obtain higher yields of fuel products from high molecular weight of the carbons. Fractionation is simply separation of compounds based on boiling points, where different fuel cuts can be obtained. In the pulp and fuel project, we studied three parts of the syncrude product. First, there is the version of fischer tropsch oil, which is extracted from the syncrude in a cold knockout drum. Secondly, there is a fischer tropsch oil fraction, which we obtain by vacuum distillation of the syncrude from the hot discharge drum. And finally, there is the residual wax. The two different oil fractions were hydrotreated to saturate olefins and remove heteroatoms, which in this case largely consists of oxygen present in linear higher alcohols. Two different oil fractions, or the two different oil fractions have similar boiling point curves and are found to be suitable as blend stock for diesel, either directly or after an additional fractionation step. So to summarize this presentation, we found that this syngas generated in the Poplin fuel project is suitable for fissure drop synthesis and hydroprocessing after proper gas cleaning. And depending on which strategy we use for upgrading the synchrude, we can obtain different fuel cuts. And the product we tested was found to be suitable as a renewable diesel plant feedstock. And with that, I thank you for listening to this presentation.